Now new at nine and a Utah woman barely survived a sledding accident last month in Provo. Fox 13 News reporter Lucy Nelson spoke with Mikaili Young from the hospital. She recovers from several broken bones and brain surgery. One, a two, and a three, two, two. I sat in the tube and slid down and I was felt like I was going really fast. On December 16th, Mikaili Young slid into darkness. I slipped backwards and then I don't remember anything after that. I like looked to my left and then I just see her like just smack right into a purple like the back of her head and it was really just crazy. What was a night of sledding with her boyfriend and some friends, now a fight for survival for the 19 year old. Said we're going to give you a list of the injuries that she has. You might want to put it in your notes. And they started with the epidural hematoma, the bleeding in her brain, and that's when I really lost it. The list goes on right here at Rock Canyon Park is where McKaylee broke 21 ribs, fractured two vertebrae, and broke her collarbone and scapula. She has rods in her back, screws in her back, pins in her head. Uh, she had to have that craniotomy. So it's the um, lung tube that she had to have to drain everything and the brain tube. It's a lot. McKaylee says she was actually nervous to go sledding in the first place that night and wishes she had followed her gut. She hopes others view her story as an example to be safe in the snow. I'll just be careful in what you're doing and if you don't want to do something, that's okay. She says recovery will be long, but the fight is worth it. I think we take a lot for granted, just in general in life, like going to the bathroom on your own and walking at one point, and I have nerve damage in my right arm, and so, like... I can't wiggle my fingers or anything like that. McKaylee feeling lucky to be here now to tell her story. I think I went through this because I needed a reset and I needed to look at things from a different perspective and just to be grateful for more, like the really tiny things that we don't think about, but they're a big deal and they do a lot for you. In Provo, Lucy Nelson, Fox 13 News, Utah. Lucy, thank you. McKaylee's friends have started a fundraiser to help with her expensive medical bills. We'll post a link to that fundraiser for you to donate on our website. You see it right here. Our website, of course, is fox13now.com. Some developing news tonight as the Utah Supreme Court now gets involved in a lawsuit challenging the legislature's congressional redistricting maps. Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow joins us with more on this from the Matheson Courthouse. These are rarely granted, but the Utah Supreme Court has agreed to hear an interlocutory appeal in the lawsuit over redistricting. Now, you'll recall a group of people, including the League of Women Voters of Utah and Mormon Women for Ethical Government, sued the legislature. They say the congressional map the legislature passed is illegal gerrymandering. It splits Salt Lake County into four districts. Critics say it tilts heavily toward Republicans. A lower court judge refused the legislature's request to dismiss the lawsuit, so they took it to the state Supreme Court. An order obtained by Fox 13 News signed by Associate Chief Justice John Pierce says the justices have agreed to hear that appeal, but the court also agreed to hear a claim that was dismissed surrounding the voter approved Proposition 4, which created an independent redistricting commission that put forward maps with public input. Those maps the legislature rejected entirely. In a statement to Fox 13 News, the Senate President and House Speaker say they're glad the court granted their appeal and look forward to presenting their case. The League of Women Voters of Utah says it's disappointed in the court's decision to hear the legislature's petition, but it wasn't unexpected. But the court did grant their petition to appeal the dismissal of the Prop 4 claim, so the court will look at all the claims now. The League says, we look forward to continuing to make our case for the voters of Utah. So far, no timeline has been set on when the Supreme Court justices will hear arguments in that appeal. At the Matheson Courthouse, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. A bill, meantime, introduced on Utah's Capitol Hill would legalize fentanyl strips. They're used to determine if a drug contains fentanyl. Supporters say they would help with harm reduction so people know what they're using. But they're also technically considered drug paraphernalia. 
Salt Lake City Senator Jennifer Plum's bill would allow them to be legally given out by agencies like the Utah Department of Health and Human Services and harm reduction advocates. Well, finally, some national headlines for you right now. As America's House, you could say, is in order, members of Congress set to convene Monday after an historic battle for Speaker of the House with California Republican Kevin McCarthy emerging victorious. Tina Kim has details. Defend the Constitution. Members of the House finally sworn in early Saturday after a days long speaker saga not seen in 160 plus years. Under the rules, the House cannot do any business until the speaker is selected. And it took California Republican Kevin McCarthy four days and 15 rounds of voting to get the job he was campaigning for, overcoming intense opposition from a small number of hardline conservatives. That was easy, huh? I never thought we'd get up here. The victory came with high drama.